Hello and a warm welcome to Fun of Flying. When I first started writing Arduino sketch codes for my home cockpit uh, projects, I always wrote into those codes the actual keyboard commands that I wanted to send to X-Plane and then I had to go into X-Plane itself to assign those keyboard commands to the virtual cockpit controls that I wanted to operate. A long time later I found out that with the right code I could turn my microcontroller into what's called a human interface device or a sort of gamepad if you like that would automatically be recognized by Windows 10 and of course X-Plane in the form of internal button presses although even here I still had to assign those internal button presses to the virtual controls in the aircraft. So in both cases it was always a bit time consuming having to write the code first and then after that having to make all of the necessary assignments in X-Plane as required. Not only that but I was always restricted to using the Arduino Leonardo microcontroller due to its onboard AT Mega 32U4 processor and its native USB support which the larger and more powerful Mega 2560 and the UNO simply didn't have. Towards the end of last year however I started to investigate a plugin called X-Plane Direct which I downloaded free from the uh, Curiosity Workshop website and a chap named Michael uh, who's apparently based in Kansas. Initially I didn't have any luck at all writing code to be used in conjunction with this plugin but after a lot more trial and error I eventually succeeded in getting data ref values out of X-Plane and presenting these values on various displays and if you're a regular viewer of my channel you will have probably seen the YouTube videos that I posted about this already. However the one thing that I couldn't seem to do at the time was to send data back into X-Plane such as that required for triggering various commands or changing any number of data ref values. In fact the ability to do this eluded me for quite some time but I'm pleased to say that I've now overcome the problems I was having to the point where I can actually get external momentary push buttons uh, or uh, on off toggle switches to operate their virtual counterparts inside X-Plane. Now clearly I can't claim any credit for the X-Plane Direct plugin and associated Arduino library. This is very much the work of Michael and his colleagues at Curiosity Workshop. But what I can uh, claim credit for are the sketch codes that I'm now writing to get data in and out of X-Plane via the plugin. Basically the X-Plane Direct plugin serves as quite a complex interface with X-Plane but for it to work properly it still absolutely requires sketch codes like mine otherwise it would just sit there waiting for instructions that will never come. For me then this is pretty much utopia as it now means that I can manipulate the virtual controls in X-Plane without the need for any human interface device and without the need to make any assignments in the simulator. Now this is what I've been working towards for a long time and all of this frankly opens up all sorts of new possibilities for the future so a big thank you to Michael and his colleagues at uh, Curiosity Workshop for pointing me in the right direction. Anyway, moving swiftly on, what I'm going to show you today is how to get physical toggle switches operating virtual switches in the simulator. And yes, of course, you've seen stuff like this before, but what you haven't seen is the new coding required to make this setup function through the X-Plane Direct plugin. Now I suspect that most of my viewers will be experienced enough uh, in terms of making up wiring circuits for this sort of thing. But uh, just in case there are any new viewers uh, watching, and um, before we get on to the sketch code side of things, I thought that I'd show you my little test board. As is customary, I've taken photographs of it from all four sides so that you can see more clearly the physical components that I'm using for this project and how they are all connected. To make things even clearer though I think that this photograph would be more helpful and of course at the center of everything we have the powerful Mega 2560 microcontroller 
we have our 11 on off toggle switches and lastly our ground distribution board which makes the termination of all ground wires that much easier when it comes to connecting them back to the microcontroller itself. This is obviously the theoretical version of the same wiring layout although a couple of points to make here. One, as far as all of the uh, switch signal wires are concerned I have them connected as shown here to the microcontroller at pins 4 through 10, 22, 24, 26 and 28. I only chose these pin numbers for convenience sake uh, when making up my test board but you could just as easily terminate these signal wires at any pin just as long as it can be set up as a digital input. With regard to all of the switch ground return wires of which there are 11 in total this clearly could present a problem as I alluded to just now simply because of the small number of ground pins available on the microcontroller i.e. there's simply not enough pins for all of the wires that need to be connected. Not to worry though, this is precisely why I created my ground distribution board that I showed you previously which serves as a primary collection point for all ground wires and which from a continuity point of view is then connected back to the microcontroller through just one single ground wire. The last point to make here is that you would normally have to include physical pull down or pull up resistors on switched circuits connected to a microcontroller input pin to prevent erroneous electrical signals being read at that pin. However, as I'm taking advantage of the pull up resistor actually built into the microcontroller itself, as declared in my sketch code, such physical resistors are not actually required in this case. OK, so now we can start having a look at the code. And what I've done here is to create a very short code uh, to start with that deals with just one of my switches, which in this case will be operating uh, the master battery switch in the aircraft. And I've done this um, to make it easier for you to understand exactly what is required uh, for each of the toggle switches in terms of code and how much of this code is actually required just to make the explain direct plug-in work. Um, so I've broken it down into two sections and you'll see that for each toggle switch you'll need just five short lines of code. And the first one here is to create uh, storage space in memory for the data ref value that we're dealing with in this case which is the master battery switch as I just said. Then the next line of code for this particular toggle switch is to declare which uh, pin terminal number that we're using on the Mega 2560, in this case 4. And we're also going to uh, declare that pin number 4 as an input and we're using the onboard uh, pull up resistor um, to, so that we don't have to put resistors in the physical wiring. So that's line 3. Coming down here, we've got line four, and that's um, our intention to express an interest in this particular data ref uh, to do with the master battery switch. And this is here so that we can write to that data ref and change its values. And that's line four. And then coming down lastly to line five, and this is reading uh, pin number four which our toggle switch is connected and if it detects a voltage then it will uh, send uh, information onto the explain plugin and to explain itself to change the value um, of that data ref from zero to one i.e. it's uh, moving the switch the virtual switch in the aircraft from um, the off position to the on position so very quickly again we have line one here, creating space in memory. Line two is declaring the pin number that our physical toggle switch is connected to. Line three is declaring that pin four as an input using the onboard pull up resistor. Line four is declaring our interest in the data ref value of concern, in this case the battery master switch. And line five is uh, reading the uh, pin number four so that we can alter the value of that data ref in explain. So that's five lines per switch. So the rest of this code, all this up here, 
and this lot here that line that line and all of this down here is basic code to make this X plane direct plugin function properly and as long as uh, all of these lines of code related to that are written properly then there won't be any problem at all so that is it really five lines of code for one uh, toggle switch and if I change over to uh, this piece of uh, code here this is my full code and um, we've got these same sections up here to make the X plane uh, direct plug-in work for properly all that down there but what I've done is I've added additional lines into this code for all of the remaining 10 uh, toggle switches that I'm using so we've got battery switch generator fuel pump beacon lights landing lights taxi lights nav lights strobe lights pito heat avionics bus 1 and avionics bus 2 and each of those are connected to the different pins on the Mega 2560. Now as far as these descriptors, descriptors are concerned you can call them whatever you like it's up to you um, just make sure that you're consistent with them through the rest of the code. Then we come down to declaring each of these pins here as inputs using the onboard pull-up resistor and then we express our interest in all of the different data refs that in X-Plane that we're interested in to do with battery, generator, fuel pump, beacon lights, landing lights and so on and a good tool to find out what these data refs are is the data ref editing tool that you can download for X-Plane very handy uh, to establish exactly um, what the data ref uh, descriptor is and how you should write to it and then we've got uh, all of the digital reads of all of those pin numbers there and if it detects a uh, voltage then it will uh, write about back to the data ref value in X-Plane changing the virtual switch from uh, off to on or vice versa depending on which way you uh, move your physical switch of course so that's it um, five lines of uh, actual code per switch uh, leads to all of these things down here and the rest of it is just to make the X-Plane plugin work properly okay so I hope that's reasonably clear but if not obviously you can uh, message me and I will try to help you where I can okay so the time has come to uh, test everything out uh, specifically my um, sketch code in conjunction with the X-Plane Direct plugin and uh, using my 11 external toggle switches um, I'm hoping to see these two switches here the ma uh, master battery switch and the generator switch operate these seven switches here and also the avionics bus one and two switches so I'll move my cursor well out the way and uh, you should be seeing a video overlay of my external tool switches and you'll see me operate those and uh, let's see what happens in the uh, cockpit so we'll go to this one here for the battery master battery switch which works we've got the generator switch fuel pump beacon lights landing lights taxi excuse the dog in the background nav lights strobe lights pito heat avionics bus one and avionics bus two let me turn them all off again uh, everything's working as it should be uh, fuel pump and battery and that's it so all of that without a keyboard assignment in sight or any human interface device that is the uh, sketch code that I've written through the Xplain Direct plugin directly into Xplain itself so there we are then the end of yet another project that you may even wish to have a go at yourselves at some point which hopefully you found of interest and maybe somewhat inspiring and if you did then don't forget to smash the like button and even consider subscribing so as not to miss anything in future 
as always and as I said before if you have any questions please let me know and I'll try to assist you where I can. Finally I would like to thank you once again for your continued support of my channel and wish you all the good things that life has to offer. Ta-ta for now.